Hi everyone, welcome to another one of the Mount of Praise devotions. Today's devotion is entitled Faith Fill Words. There's a well known childhood chant that says, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. I know most of you would have heard this before, and I know some of you would have even repeated it. But I hope that you've never believed it because it's simply not true. Proverbs 18 verse 21 states that death and life is in the power of the tongue. What's this verse saying? It's saying that this small muscle that we have here in our mouth has great power. It's not only there to form words, but it has power to bless and power to curse, whether it's someone else or yourself. Words are powerful. If we go back down through memory lane, some of you don't try not to go too far. <laughs> there are so many occasions where most of our hurt, we fell and even inflicted on others would have been through words. Think about it. Tell me if it's not true. You see, from the beginning, God spoke words and everything came into being. Words are indeed powerful. Our faith is expressed through words. Mark 11, verse 22 to 23 states, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to the mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. In this verse, Jesus demonstrated to his disciples the importance of having our speech grounded in God. When we do so, one, we are having our faith in the one who said it, and two, we are trusting the one who will perform it. We must have faith-filled words. Let me take you back to a scene from David and Goliath. Here, we have a shepherd boy who defeated a giant. When no one in Israel had the courage to face Goliath, David marched into King Saul's tent and he volunteered for a duty. Yes, he volunteered to fight Goliath. Saul, of course, looked at David and he looked at the physical physical condition. He said, you're too young, you're too small, you're just a shepherd boy. And he assumed that David could not handle the job. David, however, convinced Saul when he used faith-filled words. Then he boldly said, the Lord who delivered me out of the hands of the lion and out of the hands of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hands of the Philistine. David went up to Goliath, who insulted him and threatened him. But David once again spoke faith-filled words. He said to the giant, You come to me with a sword and a shield and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty. David let the rock fly, and the rest as we know it, was history. You see, many times we dwell on our physical condition. The lack of finances, the broken relationships, illnesses, the current pandemic. The situations, yes, they are real, no doubt. But we are fighting a spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So therefore, according to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, our weapons cannot be carnal. They cannot be physical. So we need to put down the sticks. We need to put down the stones. Let us stop. Stop stating the problems. Stop rehearsing the problems. We go on and on and out on about problems so much that sometimes that's all we see. We feel them. We think them. Let me tell you. 
I've had my share of obstacles. Trust me, when I say that dwelling on the problems, they have absolutely no benefits. On the contrary, when I look up to God, when I look up to God and trust in his words and use them to speak to my situation, that's when victory prevailed. I would say, God, your plans are to prosper me and not to harm me. You have not given me the power of fear, but of love, power, and the sound mind. I would say, you said that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. And those words, those are the words that help me overcome. So let's instead use the weapons we've already been equipped with. Second Peter 1 and verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness, if we can only believe that, and use our faith-filled words. We must hold on to God's promises. And like David, speak into our situation, our circumstances, our restrictions. Do so. Speak with faith. Keep speaking until change occurs. Don't stop halfway. Don't be double-minded like the waves. Don't be double-minded. Let us change the way we speak. Declare faith-filled words and victory will be yours. So I challenge you today. Speak faith-filled words. And let me know of the outcome. God bless you.